Hi, it's Carolyn. I'm here to help you learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes. And in this video, I am showing you how I bake all of the cakes that I'm making. So this week is a really busy week and I have to bake a bunch of different sizes and many different flavors. And I just wanna show you how I break down the recipe to make sure that I don't waste the cake batter. Now there's a couple things that I wanna say before I start the video that are pretty important. I break my recipe down into thirds, that way I don't waste any cake batter or as little cake batter as possible. And I have a video where I go into detail and talk about that and I'm gonna link that in the description for you. And I'm not giving full recipes in this video. I do briefly give a chocolate recipe, but I'm just trying to show you how I figure out how much cake batter I'm going to make. I have tons of videos showing you how I make all of these different cake recipes. I'm gonna link them in the description. And I also have an ebook that you can download in a PDF format that lists all my recipes all together in one place. So that will be linked down in the description for you as well. So let's get started. All right, to start, I'm going to preheat my oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside my oven, the rack, the baking rack is set in the middle. And on the bottom rack, I have two cookie sheets. I was told years ago that having cookie sheets down there helps to evenly distribute the heat. I don't think it's necessary in these newer ovens. However, I've been doing it for so long. I just keep those cookie sheets down there. You do not have to have them down there if you don't want to. I have all of my order forms for the week behind this sheet of paper and I wrote down all of the cake flavors that I need to make and how many of each size. And I'm gonna explain what all of this means here. I'm covering up all the private information and we're just focusing on the flavors right now. So if I look at this form, it says I'm making a five inch strawberry cake and a three layer seven inch confetti cake. Now, I have a video where I talk about when I tort and when I don't tort my cakes. I will either do two layers torted, so a two layer. I never note two layer because most of my cakes are two layer. So if there's no two L, it means it's a two layer. I only note if it's a three, a one three or a four layer cake, but anyway. So this cake, the top tier is gonna be a two layer torted five inch strawberry and the bottom tier is a three layer not torted seven inch confetti. I'm doing three layers not torted because I want the bottom tier to be taller so I have more decorating space. So I'm gonna come over here to my little paper and what I did, I wrote down strawberry and then I have a five inch round, five R is five inch round and I have two strikes here for two of them. And then for this one, this is confetti. I'm making three seven inch round cakes. So I write out confetti, seven inch round, and I have three strikes here. Moving on to the next one, I have, so there's no uh, indication of how many layers. That means it's two layers. So I'm doing a two layer six inch chocolate and a two layer eight inch vanilla. So on this, I wrote chocolate. And then underneath it, I have six inch round. I have two. And then this is vanilla, I need two eight inch rounds. On this one, I am doing a three layer, five inch top tier and a double barrel, four layer, seven inch bottom tier. So I need three five inch round confetti. So I have that here and I need four seven inch round lemon. And I have that here and I'm also doing a free confetti muffin cupcake. So I have that there. For this one, I'm doing a two layer five inch red velvet, which is here, and a seven, a two layer seven inch wedding, wedding bouquet, which is there. And then this order is actually two cakes. So I have a two layer four inch vanilla, a two layer six inch strawberry, a two layer eight inch chocolate chocolate chip, two layer five inch strawberry, and a two layer seven inch chocolate. So I have this little sheet here and it has all of the flavors, how many of every size that I have to make. If I'm making a square cake instead of 7R, it would say 7SQ for square. So I know that a R is a round cake pan. I know how many of each size and in each flavor I have to make. Now, when I decide on what cakes that I'm putting in the oven, I have to figure out which ones are going to fit. So I take a look at the flavors and the sizes. I can fit three seven inch and three five inch pans in the oven at one time. So let's start by doing 
three seven inch and three five inch confetti cakes. Now I come over here to the little, my little cake batter saver chart that I have posted on my refrigerator. I'm constantly uh, re referencing this and I will link this in the description for you. This I just taped on separately. This is however many grams of cake mix I need depending on how much batter I'm making. I need three seven inch and three five inch. If I look over here, one full batch of Dr. Cake Mix will fill three five inch pans and a four inch. I'll have a little bit of batter left over after I fill three five inch pans. Then I need to fill three seven inch pans and I look here and one full batch fills two seven inch pans. So I need a little bit extra cake batter to be able to fill the third seven inch pan. If I look down here, one third of the batch will fill a six inch pan and I'm going to have a little bit left over from doing the five inches. So right now, it looks like I need one full batch for the five, one full batch for two of the seven, and then a third to fill that other seven inch cake pan. So I need to make two and a third recipe of this confetti cake batter to be able to fill all of these pans. So I have two mixers. I just find it easier to work with two mixers. So I'm going to do one and a third recipe in one of them and just one recipe in the other. So I'm gonna need 580 grams of cake mix in one and 432 grams of cake mix in the other. So this one on the left is going to be my one and a third bowl and this one on the right is just going to be my one batch. I don't like to do more than two full batches in this one bowl. I just feel like it fills the bowl too much and it doesn't mix as well. That's why I prefer to split it up. You can do it all in one bowl if you want. I just get a better result doing this way. So I need to remember the one on the left is the one that's gonna have more. This is one and a third and this is one recipe. So I have one and a third cup of sugar on the left and one cup of sugar on the right. One and a third cup of all-purpose flour and one cup of all-purpose flour on the right. So I have my scale here. I'm putting the bowl on it, turn it on, and then I wanna set it to grams. So I'm just changing the unit, make sure it's set to zero. And then this is one and a third recipe. So I need 580 grams of cake mix. So I just have this Betty Crocker yellow cake mix. This is my favorite brand to use. And I'm just putting all of this in here until I get 580 grams. Good, so that's the one and a third. And in the bowl with one batch, I stick the bowl on here. I'm gonna set that to zero. And then it was 432 grams of cake mix for one batch. And my camera stopped recording. I just added the milk, sour cream, and eggs. And I'll show you how I do that process when I make the chocolate cake next. Now I have my grease cake pans. They have heating core nails in the center of all of them. I explain that in tons of my videos where I show you how to bake the cakes. And this is my pan grease that I lightly brush on the inside of all the pans and on the nail with a pastry brush. So this is the bowl that has one full batch and it was supposed to fill three five inch cake pans with a little bit left over. And I do bake in two inch high pans and I fill them about two thirds of the way full. And I filled three five inch cake pans and I have a little bit left over to start in a seven inch pan. And then here is the batch that has one and a third. So I could fill the rest of the seven inch pans with this, two thirds of the way full. And that looks good. We're going to place these in the oven. So I like to evenly space them out. So I'm gonna do two sevens and a five, and then have two fives and a seven in the front. Making sure that there's enough space in between so the air can flow. And since these cake pans are different sizes, I'll check them after about 38 minutes because they're all gonna bake at different times. All right, now I wanna figure out what's the next cakes that I wanna bake. And I try to see what, um, what sizes I have in similar flavors. So I have this chocolate here and chocolate chocolate chip over here so I can make a chocolate base. So what I wanna do, I'm not gonna be able to fit two eights, two sevens, and two sixes in my oven and have even airflow. So I'm gonna do one eight of chocolate chocolate chip and then two sevens and two sixes of chocolate. So let's see how much uh, cake batter I need. So again, I need two sevens, two sixes, and one eight of chocolate. So you can see one full batch is two sevens, so that's one that I'm gonna need, one batch. And then two sixes is two thirds of a batch. So I have one and two thirds, 
plus I need one eight inch pan and that is right here, two thirds. So two thirds for the sixes and two thirds for the one eight is one and a third. So I need, again, I need one and a third in one bowl and I need one batch in the other bowl. So I'm gonna go do the same thing with the chocolate batter. I'm starting with one and a third cup sugar on the left and one cup of sugar on the right, one and a third cup of all-purpose flour on the left and one cup of flour on the right. And I'm doing 580 grams of the chocolate cake mix on the left side and 432 grams of chocolate cake mix on the right. I'm adding one and a third cup of milk on the left, one cup of milk on the right, one and a third cup of sour cream and one cup on the right. And then I mix it till it's just incorporated. Now I don't wanna confuse you with the eggs. I add one egg per third of the recipe, plus I always add one extra yolk per three eggs that I use. So this is one and a third recipe, so I'm gonna add four eggs, and then since I have three eggs in there, I'm gonna add another egg yolk. The egg yolk just helps keep the recipe a little bit more moist. And then you always wanna add the eggs one at a time and mix completely in between just to make sure they're evenly distributed in the batter. Now this side I have one batch of cake mix. So it is three eggs total. And then since I'm using three eggs, I add an extra egg yolk. So there's three whole eggs and one egg yolk that I'm adding them one at a time. I didn't just dump them all in there. That was the last one I was adding. <laughs> And I always scrape the bottom and the sides of the bowl. If you use a scraper blade, you can skip this step, but I just prefer to do it manually. And then with a doctored mix, you always want to beat it for about two minutes to incorporate the air and help it rise. Remember, I have two six inch and two seven inch of the chocolate cake, and I'm filling them two thirds of the way full. And then with this leftover batter, I can add some chocolate chips. So for the eight inch pan, it was chocolate chocolate chips. So I'm just stirring them in there and adding that to the pan. And look, I use all of that cake batter. Place them evenly distributed in the oven and let's bake them. Now, as the other ones are baking, I always wrap the other ones up and freeze them. So I lightly wrap them up. Don't wrap them up too tight. I pull that plastic out and I put it upside down, remove the core, heat and core nail, lightly wrap it with the plastic wrap, and then I store it in the freezer. And I always store them upside down when I put them in the freezer because I level off the tops. So I just like to store them upside down so I don't mess it up. All right, so I wanna figure out which ones I want to bake next. And again, I just try to look at the flavors and the sizes and figure out what I'm going to be able to fit into my oven. So this time I'm going to do all of the strawberry cakes and I'm gonna do one of the seven inch wedding cakes. These are all small size cake pans, so I can fit four fives, two sixes, and a seven inch all in the oven. So I'm gonna look at my chart and see how much I have to bake. So for the seven inch wedding, I'm going to need two thirds of the mix. I'm gonna have a little bit left over, but if I only do one third of the batch, it's not gonna fill the pan enough. So I'm going to do two thirds of the wedding bouquet. And then here's where it gets a little tricky. <laughs> so I am doing six inch, two sixes and four fives. Now, if you look at one full batch, it will do three fives and a four. So one full batch, is not really enough to make four fives. I'm gonna need a little bit more. And then two thirds of the batch is good for two six inch pans. So that would be two batches of the strawberry total. However, since I'm gonna be just slightly short with the five inches, I'm going to risk it and only do one and two thirds batch of the mix and evenly distribute it in all of them. And I think I should be okay. So if, you're, if I'm going according to the chart, I'm gonna need a little bit more than one and two thirds and a little bit less than two full batches. So I'm just going to do one and two thirds. So one and two thirds strawberry and two thirds of the wedding bouquet. Here's the strawberry and the wedding bouquet cake batter. And as you can see, I have a little bit left over of the wedding bouquet cake batter for the seven inch. And pretty much I have used all of the cake batter for the strawberry. So I'm glad that I didn't make two full batches because I was able to evenly distribute in all of them. 
and place them in the oven so there's enough airflow and I'm gonna bake them again and again while those are baking I'm taking the other ones and that I just took out of the oven and wrapping them up placing them upside down in the freezer all right next I'm going to do the vanilla along with the seven inch wedding and I I'm doing these two together because these are both based off of the yellow cake mix and this one I just add the wedding flavoring so I can make this all in one. So I need two eight inch, two four inch, and one seven inch. So we come over here, two eight inch will be one and one third, two four inch will be one third, so that's one and two thirds total, and then a seven inch is two thirds. The total is two and a thirds of the recipe. So again, I'm gonna do one and one third in one bowl and one full batch in the other bowl. I have all the vanilla yellow cake batter made and I'm gonna put it in the eight inch, the two eight inch and it fills part of one of the four inch pans and then I go over to the other one and fill the rest of the four inch pans. And then I have that leftover. I need to add that wedding bouquet cake flavoring. I'll link that in the description for you. It's delicious and I just mix that in there and pour that in the seven inch pan. And now I have to make two five inch red velvet and one eight inch chocolate chocolate chip. So I need two thirds of the batch to make two five inch pans and two thirds of the batch to make one eight inch pan. So I need two thirds for the red velvet and two thirds for the chocolate chocolate chip. And again, I just mix that all together. There's a little bit left over of the red velvet. I pretty much used all of it for the chocolate chocolate chip. And finally, I need four seven inch lemon round cakes and one full batch makes two seven inch pans. So I need four of them. So that means I need two full batches of the lemon cake mix. And as I said before, I can make up to two full batches in one bowl. So that's two batches in there. And I can pretty much use all of this lemon cake mix. I had to scoop a little bit out of the other cake pans and put it in the one that didn't have enough in it. And now it's all evenly distributed. And I just want to show you how I stack these cakes on top of each other. Those cakes are frozen and I have these cake box lids that I'm going to stick on top. And I like to take the cakes that have been in the freezer for a while and stack them on top of the frozen cakes and put the warmer cakes on the bottom. So again, I'm taking the cakes that were frozen and stacking them on top of the frozen cakes, making room for the cakes I'm just taking out of the oven and placing those cakes in there. And here are all the cakes that I baked for the week. I'm keeping them in here until I am ready to thaw them and fill them. So there you go. There is my process of trying to figure out how much batter to make and what cakes I'm going to be able to fit in the oven at a certain time. Now, since ovens are different sizes, you may not be able to fit the same size pans in your oven. So you just have to mess around with it and see what fits. You want to be able to have space in between the cake, in, in between the cake pans so air can flow completely around all of the cake pans. So you don't want them touching when they're in the oven. And when I have a bunch of different cakes of different sizes in the oven, they bake at varying times. So that I think I said in the video, I always check the cakes after about 37, 38 minutes or so, and then just keep checking every five minutes or however long it needs to finish baking. But for example, if I put four inch cakes in with eight inch cakes, the four inch cakes are going to be done in about 30 to 35 minutes while the eight inch cakes will still take up to 50 or more minutes to do. So baking times are always going to vary depending on what size cakes you have in the oven and how many cakes that you have in there as well. So I think that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. And just a reminder, I do have a Cake Academy membership program where I can help you elevate your cakes to the next level. I'm gonna leave all that information in the description. Please like this video if you liked it. And if you are enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is down below. And I would love it if you would keep in touch on socials and you could check out my website. 
And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Why do I say it like that? Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's KCAP fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.